hello everyone welcome to the mercury virtual hope you are doing good today i'm going to continue with your chapter number 11 that is concurrent programming in the last class we have discussed concurrent programming with the threads <coughs> and that will be continued in the today's class that is in today's class i'm continuing with the same topic that is concurrent programming with the threads that is how concurrent programming is done with the help of the threads but uh, before going to start with the new topic that is a today's topic let's take a quick review what we have covered in the last class so let's take a quick review what we have covered in the last class uh, we have started with the uh, topic that is a concurrent programming with the threads that is in the last class we have started with the third topic of the uh, chapter that is a concurrent programming with threads in this we have studied what is a thread? A thread is a logical flow that co runs in the context of a process. That is, if any process is running, then uh, any logical flow, that is, uh, uh, for example, if P1 is running in an execution phase, then any logical flow that runs in the context of a process, any uh, flows, any arguments, any disturbances, that is, runs in the context of a process that is known as the thread. So, thread is a logical flow that runs in the context of process thus far in this book our programs have consisted of a single thread per process this said th uh, till this point we have considered only single thread per process but uh, nowadays modern systems also allows to use the multi threading or the multiple threads at the same time that is known as the multi multi threading system so this is uh, the threads are scheduled automatically by the kernel that is scheduled or threads it is the capability of the thread that it is scheduled automatically by the kernel of the operating system each thread has its own thread context that is every thread that is used is has or has its own thread context including a unique integer tid that is every thread uh, thread is identifying by its tid that is a uh, thread identification and the stack, stack pointer, program counter, uh, purpose register or general purpose register condition codes. That is every thread have, must have these attributes like TID, stack, pointer. This says all threads running in a process share the entire virtual address space of that process. Logical flows based on threads combine qualities of flows based on the processes and input output multiplexing. So uh, the first two topics that we have covered that is concurrent programming with the processes and the concurrent programming with the input output multiplexing. So uh, concurrent programming with threads is a combination of both the uh, terms that is concurrent programming with the process and the concurrent programming with the input output multiplexing. Like processes, threads are scheduled automatically by the kernel and known to the kernel by an integer ID. This is the uh, thread execution model, that is how thread will be executed. Uh, there are two types of threads, one is main thread, one is peer thread. The main thread is known as thread 1 and the peer thread is known as a thread 2. So there are two types of thread. Uh, thread 1 is consisting or uh, going to the or uh, converted into the thread 2. So one is main thread, that is a thread context switch, another one is thread this is the execution model for the multiple threads is similar in some way to the execution model for the multiple processes. That is multiple threads uh, is equivalent to the execution of the multiple processes that executes whenever we use the concurrent programming with the threads. Each process begins with, uh, with the single thread that is known as the main thread. This is the main thread. At some point the main thread creates a peer thread. So this main thread creates a peer thread and the cursor or the uh, tr uh, flows transfer from the main thread to the peer thread. This is the peer thread executes for a while before control passes back to the main thread and so on. Next is your POSIX thread that is your P thread that is a uh, interface that is used for manipulating the threads for the or from the C programs. Then we have studied about the hello.c program that is using the p thread that is a p thread program then uh, next what we have studied is creating a thread that is how threads are created 
so threads are created by using the function that is known as the p thread underscore create so one function is used for creating the thread that is known as p thread underscore create function then we have studied how to uh, terminate the threads there are two ways to terminate the thread one is in the implicit way one is in the explicit way uh, whenever we use the implicit way it will uh, terminate the top level thread and when we use the explicit explicit way it will uh, call the or it will use the p thread exit function so whenever it uh, terminate or the thread terminates in an implicit way it uh, terminate by using the top level thread and whenever it will terminate explicitly then it will call the p thread underscore exit function then we have studied how to reap the reap means clean out the terminated threads the threads which have already terminated how to reap them how to remove them by using the p thread underscore join function so how to reap the threads by using the p thread underscore join function then uh, we have studied how to detach the threads that is how to use the or detach the different threads this says by default threads are created joinable in order to avoid memory leaks each joinable thread should either be explicitly reaped by another thread or detached by call to the p thread detached function so which function is used for detaching the threads that is a p thread underscore detach function then we have studied how to initialize the thread that is done by using the p thread underscore once function that allows you to initialize the state associated with the thread routine that is the p thread underscore once function then we have studied uh, a concurrent server based on the thread that is how a one server or the concurrent server is based on the threads this is the example in c language this is the concurrent eco server that is based on the threads and then we have the peer thread reference the pointer then we have studied what how to use the pointer with the thread then we have studied about the next topic that is how to use the shared variable in the threaded program that is in simple terms how to use the variables in the thread that is a shared variable in the threaded program from the programmer's perspective one of the attractive aspect of thread is the ease with which multiple threads can share the same program variable however this sharing can be tricky that is sharing in the threaded program is very tricky this is the example how p thread will be used that shows different aspect of sharing then we have studied about the thread memory model that is how uh, memory or different uh, attribute will be used in the memory that is a thread memory model which includes thread id stack stack pointer program counter condition codes etc then we have studied the how to map the variables to the memory that is how or what are the types of variable that will be used uh, whenever we use the thread for the memory So there are three variables that is used uh, whenever we uh, map the variables to the memory. What are the three variables? One is global variable, one is local variable, one is static variable. Global variable is declared outside the function and any function within the program can access it. In local variable, uh, these variables are declared inside the block, inside the loop and only that block, only that block will use that variable other block cannot use that variable because that is local to the one of the specified block then static variable that is declared inside a function with the static attribute that is local vari variable cannot declare with some attribute with some uh, keyword but the local va static variable is declared with the keyword that is known as static that is a local static variable Uh, then we have studied that uh, how to use a shared variable that is uh, uh, when we say that the variable is shared that is a shared if and only if one of its instances is referenced by more than one then 
uh, we have studied how to synchronize the thread that is how to use the synchronization among the thread with the concept of semaphores so semaphores is a concept with which we use uh, how to synchronize the thread this says shared variables can be convenient but they introduce the possibility of nested synchronization error consider the example that is a bad cnt.c program which creates two threads each of which increments a global shared counter variable known as the cnt this is the example of uh, how cnt will be used this is the assembly code for the counter loop that is from the line 39 to 16 in the bat count dot cnt in general there is no way to predict whether the operating system will choose a correct ordering for your thread or not now then we have studied multiple methods how to use the or how to behave with the or how to use the semaphores for the threads one of the concept that is used is the process graph that executes or this model uh, examines the execution of the n concurrent threads as a uh, n dimensional in a n dimensional space that is every process every thread can be treated as a uh, separate thread and uh, will be equal and will be represented in a two dimensional or the n dimensional space that is each axis k correspond to the progress of the thread Figure 19 shows the two-dimensional progress thread for the first loop iteration of the bat CNT. This is the figure 19 that shows the first loop iteration. That is the L1 S2. So this is the combination of the L1 and S2. This is the example. That is H1 L1 U1 H2 L2. So this is the scenario how it will be passed or how threads will be executing in a sequence. then you studied what is a safe and the unsafe trajectories uh then we have studied in detail what is a semaphore and how it will be used there are two concept there are two functions that is used is a global and and the local one is ps one is vs then we have studied the test and the decrement operations in the semaphores this is the important concept this says the scm that is sema dot uh, underscore init function initializes the sema for sem to the value then uh, next concept that we have studied is using the sema for for the mutual exclusion that is how to use the sema for for the mutual exclusion this says sema for provides a convenient way to ensure mutually exclusive access to the shared variable that is it provides or the semaphore provides a convenient way to ensure that uh, there is a mutual exclusion that is accessible to the shared variables uh, one is or uh, one of the semaphores is a uh, binary semaphore that uses the or that is uses the value of zeros and the ones then we have studied about the unsafe reason forbidden reason then we have uh, uh, discuss about the important concept that is how to use the semaphores to schedule the shared resources that is how shared resources will be scheduled that is how cpu will use the shared resources by using the concept of semaphores that is using the semaphores to schedule the shared resources this says another important use of semaphores beside providing mutual exclusion is to schedule accesses to the shared resources in this scenario a thread uses a semaphores operation to notify another thread that some condition in the program state has become true two classical examples are producer consumer and the reader writer problem so let's start with the producer consumer in detail this is what we have covered in the yesterday's class so now now let's start with the new topic with the today's topic that is the using semaphores to schedule the shared resources this is a producer consumer problem what is the producer consumer problem this says a producer and consumer shared a bounded buffer with n slots 
the producer thread repeatedly produces new items and inserts them in the buffer. The consumer thread repeatedly removes the item from the buffer and then consumes them. That is, in simple terms, producer produces and inserts the items in a buffer. The consumer removes the item from the buffer and consumes them for the execution. Variants with multiple consumer and receiver are also possible. Now, since inserting and removing items involve updating the shared variable, means if there is a shared variable that must be updated so that producer and consumer must know that uh, one item will be stored and one item will be removed. But guaranteed mutual exclusion will not sufficient. That is, it is not sufficient to use the buffer in the scheduled access. Now, what is the scenario if the buffer is full? That is, there is no empty slots. So where the producer puts the value? That is, the buffer is full then the producer must wait until a slot become available. That is a condition, if the buffer is full, that is there is no empty slot, then the producer must wait until a slot become available. Similarly, if the buffer is empty, that is there is no or there are no available items, then the consumer must wait until an item become available. Now, this is the scenario, that is if the buffer is empty, if the buffer is uh, contains or buffer is full. So there are two scenarios, this is a problem. Now, producer-consumer interaction occurs frequently in real system. The purpose of the buffer is to reduce data in the video stream caused by the data dependent differences in the encoding and decoding. This is, uh, the buffer provides a reservoir of the slot to the producer and reservoir of the encoded frame to its consumer. Now, the producer detects the mouse and keyboard events and uh, uh, insert them into the buffer. The consumer consumes and then removes the uh, items. In this section, we will devel uh, develop a simple package known as the S buffer for building the consumer problem or the producer consumer problem. So these are the function that is used. That is, first of all, the function that is used is S buffer that is the semaphore buffer underscore init function that allocates a heap memory for the buffer, sets the front and the real to indicate an empty buffer, assign the initial values to the three semaphores. This function is called once before calls to the any other three function. So one function that is used is uh, S buffer underscore init for initializing the semaphores and also uses the front and the real to indicate the empty buffer. Then next function that is used is s buffer de init. That is de init means free the buffer storage whenever an application is through using it. Then next function that is used is s buffer insert function that waits for a available slot, load the mutex and add the item, unlock the mutex and then announces the availability of the new item. So three functions: one is s buff init, one is s buff de init. One is sbuff insert. The next function that is used is sbuff remove. That function is symmetric. That is, it waits for the mutex, then signal is available for the new slot. This is how producer consumer problem will be solved by using these functions. Now, next is your reader writer problem. The reader-writer problem is a generalization of the mutual exclusion problem. Generalization means uh, it is uh, in accordance with the mutual exclusion problem. A collection of concurrent threads are accessing a shared process. That is, uh, more than one concurrent threads are accessing, are using a shared thread such as data structure in the main memory or a database on a disk. Some threads only read the, the object while other threads will modify. That is, uh, some of the threads will only read the object. That is, only read the object while others can modify it. Threads that modify the object are known as the writers. That is, the object or the threads that modify the object are known as the writers. That only read it are known as the readers. Means there are two concepts. Threads who modify the object, who insert or delete the object, any item in the object, that is known as a writer. Who only reads it, that is known as the readers. Writer must have exclusive access to the object, but 
readers may share the object with an unlimited number of other readers. In general, there are unbounded number of concurrent readers and writers. Now, this is a problem. That is, there are number of unbounded number of, there are n number of concurrent reader and writers. Then, next paragraph says, reader and writer interaction occurs frequently in real system. For example, in an air ride reservation system. Unlimited number of consumers are allowed to concurrently inspect the seat assignment, but a customer who is booking a seat must have exclusive access to the database. That is, uh, uh, if I am applying or if I am um, reserving my seat, then if I reserve my seat, then I can see my seat that is, that is available, that is check the availability. But other consumer can also check it but does not see the databases. As another example, it is a multi-threading caching. Web proxy, an unlimited number of threads can fetch existing page from the shared page data, but any thread that writes a new page to the cache must have exclusive rights. The reader-writer problem has several variations, each based on the priorities of the uh, reader and the writer. The first problem which favors reader require that no reader to be kept waiting unless a writer has already been granted permission to use the object. In other words, no reader should wait simply because a writer is waiting. That is, no reader, uh, reader is waiting uh, or should wait simply because a writer is waiting. The second problem which fear favors writer is that it requires that only once a writer is ready to write, it perform its write as soon as possible. Unlike the first problem, a reader that arrives after a, uh, a writer must wait even if the writer is also waiting. That is, reader that arrives after a writer must wait. Why they are waiting? They are waiting for the reading purpose, even though the writer is also waiting. Figure 29 shows a solution to the first reader-writer problem. The W semaphores control access to the critical section that access the shared object. The mutex protects in the critical section. Now. Let's see, figure 26, there is a one problem that is using the vo void reader, using the while loop, then use the p mutex, then you uh, increment the value that is a read count 1 1. Then uh, use, if the read count equals to 1, then write, again use the, or uh, again going into the next condition that is a critical section, that is a p mutex, again decrement the value, that is last out, this is first in, this is last out. This is the problem of the read, writer. Now, next is putting it together. That is a concurrent server based on the pre-threading. That is how a concurrent server will be used that is based on the pre-threading. We have seen how semaphores can be used to access the shared variables and to schedule access to the shared resources. To help you understand these ideas more clearly, let's apply a concurrent server based on a technique that is known as the p-threading. That is, uh, putting it together, all the terms together, we use or uh, apply them or use the concurrent server that is based on the concept of the p-threading. So p-threading is a term that is used for the concurrent server to apply the technique so that that technique will be available for the users. A server based on the pre-threading tries to reduce this overhead by using the producer-consumer model shown in the figure 27. So this is the figure 27 that is used or that is used for the organization of a pre-threaded concurrent server. That is, uh, more than one threads are used for the remove and process connected descriptor from a bounded buffer. So this is the uh, example, this is the diagram that shows 
how to organize the pre-threaded concurrent server that is how to use the uh, concurrent server with the pre-threaded method there are two clients that is uh, two clients not two clients that is uh, there are n number of clients this is client 1 client 2 and so on client n there are two types of connection that accepts the connection that is converted or that is going into the master thread that is it accepts the connection it accepts the connection and convert it or going into the master thread then it insert the descriptor that is it insert uh, inside the descriptor into the buffer so this is a buffer in which the producer uh, store the data in the buffer and then from this buffer the consumer removes the data from the buffer. This is the service client, this is the worker thread, this is the worker thread. This is the worker thread that is converted or that is going into the service client that is uh, converted into service client. This is the worker thread that is also converted into client. So this this accepts the connection into the master thread. Then it inserts the descriptor that is converted or that is inserting into the buffer. Then this buffer is uh, removed or this buffer is uh, accessed by the consumer that is a worker thread. This is a master thread. This is a worker thread. This is a pool of worker thread. This is a pool of clients. Then worker thread passes the service client or uh, passes the data to the service client. That is, it passes the data to the client. This says the server consists of a main thread. This is the server that consists of a main thread and a set of worker threads. This is the, these are the worker threads. The main thread repeatedly accepts the connection request from the client. This accepts the uh, uh, this this main thread that is a master thread accepts the connection from the clients, and places the resulting connected descriptor in a bounded buffer. This placed in the bounded buffer. Each worker thread repeatedly removes a descriptor from the buffer. This removes the descriptor, serves the clients, and then waits for the next descriptor. That is, it this worker thread serves the client and then waits for the another buffer. Figure 28 shows how we could use the sbuff package to implement the pre-threaded concurrent echo server. This is the figure 28 that shows how we use the pbuff for the concurrent pre-threaded server. That is first of all use the header file that is the cs app.h then use the another buff header file that is the sbuff.h then use this two function that is echo cnt that is for counting and then void pointer thread that is used as a pointer that stores the address of the another thread this says shared buffer of connected descriptors then use the main function use the various arguments define the function then use the check the condition if argc not equals to 2 that is if it not equals to 2 then print up the error that is usage port is argv 0 that is at the 0 location use the argv Then use the void pointer thread that is VARGB, ARGB. This is the version of the echo that counts the bytes that received from the client that is stored in the buffer. Now, uh, that concept is over, that is a semaphore's concept is over. Now, there is a next concept that is how to use the thread for the or how uh, threads are used for the parallel reason that is till now we have covered uh, how there are uh, concurrency problem concurrency method that is how threads are used with the concurrent programming now there is a new concept that is how threads are used for the parallel reason so let's take a quick review about the parallel reason what is parallel reason with the help of the ppt's
this is chapter number 11 continued that is the concurrent programming introduction to the parallel computing this is the abstract that covers or this presentation covers the aspect of the parallel computing now what is a parallel computing there is a question what is a parallel computing concurrent means as i told you when more than one process overlap in the time that is known as the concurrent processes our concurrent programming now what is a parallel computing traditionally traditionally means uh, prior in prior terms that is used or software has been written for the serial computation that is it is used for the serial computation that is one after the another that is to be run on a single computer having a single cpu that is single computer single memory system there is single cpu that is a central processing unit a problem or the main task is divided into discrete series of instruction that is the main task is divided into discrete series of problems or discrete uh, series of instructions then next point says next point says instructions are executed one after the another that is instructions are executing the sequence way in a parallel way in a single or a serial computation that is known as the uh, instructions are executing one after the another only one instruction may execute at any moment at a time that is a serial computation that is this is a problem this problem is divided into multiple instructions and at a time only one instruction is going is converted into the cpu that is at the same time only one instruction is executed by the cpu that is a central processing unit now what is parallel computing till now we have covered what is the serial computation that is only one instructions is executing at the same time then what is the parallel computing in the simplest sense the parallel computing is the simultaneously use of the multiple compute resources to solve a computational problem that is it is a simultaneous simultaneous means uh, um, that is a one uh, side by side use of the multiple compute resources that is uh, we are using the uh, same resources side by side to solve a computational problem that is more than one instructions are executed side by side that is at the same time that is in the simultaneous usage uh, this says to be run using multiple cpu that is at the same time multiple cpus are executing at the same time that is to be run using multiple cpu then next point says a problem is divided into discrete parts that can be solved concurrently uh, in the serial computation the main problem is divided into multiple instruction that is one instruction is executing at the same time in this the problem is divided or broken down into discrete parts that can be solved concurrently concurrently means at the same time or more than one instruction at the same time then next point says each part is further broken down into series of instruction that is if the main problem is divided into four instruction so if there is uh, more requirement then um, that uh, instruction that is divided is again divided into or further broken down into series of instructions that is uh, the main problem is divided into one instruction or four instructions then that four instructions are also divided into multiple instructions that is uh, one instruction two instruction three instruction and number of instructions then next point says instructions from each part execute simultaneously on different cpu that is there are four cpu as per this example this is the main problem that is divided into multiple instruction another problem is also divided into multiple instructions this problem is divided into multiple instructions that is tn t3 t2 t1 next point says uh, the parallel computing resources that is a what is the or uh, what are the resources that is available for the parallel computing this says the compute resources can include a single computer with multiple processors that is a single computer with multiple cpus 
then a single computer with multiple processors and some specialized computer resources like GPU, FG, FP, GU. Also the resources includes the arbitrary number of computers connected by the network that is n number of or uh, two or three number of computer that are connected with the network that is we can share the data among these computers that is connected by the network then a combination of both a combination of both means whether there are a multiple processor and also the number of computers that are connected with each other then parallel computing the computational problem the computational problem usually demonstrate characteristics such as the ability to be broken apart into discrete pieces of work that can be solved simultaneously. That is a computational problem arises whenever we divide the main task, whenever we divide the uh, main problem into discrete pieces of work that can be solved simultaneously. There are some problems in uh, breaking down or broking down into discrete number of or discrete pieces of work. Then next part is executes the multiple uh, program instruction at a time at any moment in time that is uh, next computation problem is how to execute the multiple problem at the same time next how to solve them in the less time with multiple compute resources than with the single compute resources these are the various problem first problem is how to divide into discrete pieces then how to execute the multiple programs uh, at the same time then how to solve in or how to solve in less time with multiple compute resources then what is a parallel computing what for that is how or what is the purpose of using the parallel computing this is parallel computing is an evaluation of serial computing that is it is an enhancement of the serial computing it is an evaluation of the serial computing that attempts to emulate what has always been the state of affairs in the natural world. That is, what has always been used or what has always been used uh, the state of the affairs in the natural world. Many complex interrelated events happening at the same time, yet within the space. That is, uh, interconnected events are also happening at the same time, yet within the space. Some examples included for the parallel computing. So in simple terms, what is a parallel computing? Uh, parallel computing means uh, whenever we, it is an evaluation of the serial computing that is used for the, or that is used to emulate what has always been the state of the up affairs. Then what are the examples of the parallel computing? Uh, examples include planetary and uh, galactic or orbits, weather and ocean patterns, technoc or technoc tectonic plate rift, rush hour traffic in Paris, automobile assembly line, daily uh, operation within a business, building a shopping mall, ordering a ham burger at the drive through So these are the various examples in which parallel computing, in, uh, uh, parallel computing is taken place or has taken place. Then uh, traditionally means uh, in the earlier period parallel computing has been considered to be the high end of computing. High end of computing means it is uh, at the highest level of computing and has been motivated by the numerical simulations of complex system and the grand challenges problems such as means uh, these are violated or these are affected by these uh, challenging problems. What are the problems that is affecting the parallel computing, weather and the climate? chemical and the nuclear reaction biological human ge genome 
geographical sensitive activity, electronic circuit. So these are affected by these uh, problems or these are influenced by these problems. Uh, next point says today commercial applications are provided an equal or greater driving force in the development of faster computer that is in the today's scenario commercial applications that is a uh, 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 trading applications buying and selling applications providing an equal or greater driving force in the development of faster computer these applications requires the processing of large amount of data in the sophisticated ways that is what are the examples or what are the applications in which parallel computing is used what are the application uh, the application includes the parallel databases data mining oil exploration web search engines computer aided diagnosis management of the national and multinational corporation that is the mncs uh, networks videos collaborative work computing in which there is a video conferencing there is a audio conferencing ultimately finally parallel computing is an attempt to maximize the infinite but seemingly or uh, seemingly scarce commodity known time that is it is used or that it is an attempt to maximize the infinite or infinite loop the main question is that why we are using or why parallel computing why parallel computing not the serial computing what are the reasons what are the primary reasons that is used one is save the time that is advantage of parallel computing is that it saves the time that is a whole clock time then it solves a larger problem quickly that is it saves the time it solves a larger problem in an efficient way without any error then next provides a concurrency that is parallel computing also provides a concurrency that is more than one things that is a multiple things at the same time other reason is that uh, taking advantage of non local resources that is use the com uh, available computer resources on a wide area network then cost saving that is cost is also saved then overcoming the memory constraints now what are the limitations of serial computing it limits to the serial computing that is it limit to the only one um, process is executing at the same time that is limits to the serial computing then uh, transmission speed is also slow that is the main limit again the main limitation of the serial computing then limit to mini uh, mini miniaturization that is it allows only one transistor to be placed then economic limitations that is uh, the cost or the profit is also less in the serial computing what is the future the future is that parallelism is the future of computing that is the serial computing is converted into the parallel computing in the day to day scenario in the future now let's see with the help of book this says using the threads for parallelism we have discussed about the theory of the parallelism this says this far in our study of uh, concurrency we have assumed that concurrent threads executes on a uniprocessor system that is till now we have covered that how uh, multiple threads are executing in a uniprocessor system but many modern machines have multiple processors that is more than one processors that is concurrent programs often run faster on such machines because the operating system kernel schedules the concurrent thread in parallel or multiple cores rather than sequentially on a single core uh, exploiting that is using such uh, uh, using such parallelism is critically important or it critically important in the applications that is uh, how, where a parallelism is important it is important in the applications such as busy web servers database servers large scientific cores and it is uh, becoming increasing useful in the mainstream such as web browser spreadsheet document processors and this is the figure that shows the concurrent program as well as the sequential programs
this is the example this is the code that is uh, using the header file using the max thread 32 this is the example of the parallel program that uses multiple threads this is the performance of the program in the case of the multi-core programming that we have studied uh, that is multi-core is very effective this is the uh, important concept that is the speed up and the parallel efficiency for the execution time in the figure 33 uh, 33 this is the threads this is a code that is t and the t there is a running time that is a tp there is a speed up that is a sp efficiency that is a ep now who and what that is uh, what is the concept or what are the organization standard that is using the parallel computing this is top500.org provides statistics on the parallel computing users that is the charts that is below are just a sample that is some things to note what are the something that is you uh, to be noted that is sectors may overlap sectors may overlap means uh, remember uh, I I told you about the disk there are tracks and the sectors in that whenever we use a parallel computing the sectors may overlap with each other for example research may be classified research that is research may be used as a research respondent have to choose between the two that is respondent have to choose among the two that how research will be used not specified is by for the largest application probably means multiple application this is again who is doing the parallel computing that is who is doing the parallel computing uh, means what are the applications or who is using the parallel computing one is academic academic is using uh, only for the 17 percent classified that is a uh, classified is also using uh, with only 5% the major area that is a 50% area that is using the parallel computing is the industry so this is the important concern that is most of the industry in our uh, country in, in the whole uh, India in the whole country that is using the 50% of the parallel computing then what are they using it for that is how they are using it for 0 to 50 percent these are using for aerospace automotive cfd database defense electronic these are the multiple application that is uh, using the parallel computing and these are the multiple areas in which parallel computing is used then next is your concepts and the terminology that is what are the concepts and what are the terminology that is used in the parallel computing One of the concept, one of the architecture that is using is the von Neumann architecture. This is for the over 40 years, virtually all computers have followed a common machine model known as the von Neumann computer. So this is a computer that is using or that is used by all the computers. A von Neumann computer uses the stored program concept. The CPU executes a stored program that specify a sequence of read and write operations on the memory what is the basic design that is the basic design memory is used to store, store both the programs and the data instruction this is the memory that is used to store the program as well as the instructions the program instructions are coded data which tell the computer to do something then data is simply information to be used by the program so data is simply the information that is used or that is stored in the memory a cpu gets the information and or, or from the memory this is the role of the cpu that gets the information from the memory uh, then decodes the instruction and then sequentially performs them that is it decodes the operation and then sequentially performs the operation then next is your flying classical taxonomy
that is a flying classical uh, taxonomy that is also used for the parallel computing. This is the flying matrix that is used. The matrix that is below defines the four possible classification according to the flying. So these are the flying matrix that is using the four concepts, four possible uh, classification. One is SIST, that is single instruction, single data. Then SIMD, single instruction, multiple data. MIST, multiple instruction, single data. MIMD, that is multiple instructions, multiple data. Now, what is SIST? That is series single instruction and single data. That is uh, using a ser serial computer. Uses only single instruction. That is only one instruction stream is being acted on by the CPU during one clock cycle. That is only one instruction is executing at the same time. Single data means only one data stream, only one data is being used as an input during one clock cycle. Then deterministic execution this is the oldest and until recently the most prevalent form of computer this is the single instruction that is load a load b c equals to a plus b then store c that is store the output uh, or the uh, addition of 2 into c then store the c then uh, uses the a equals to b into 2 that is b multiplied by 2 then store the a's value this is the oldest and until recently the most prevalent form of computer. Example, most PCs, single CPU workstation and mainframe computer. <coughs> then single instruction but with the multiple data. This is the type of the parallel computer. There is only single instruction but there are multiple data. That is uh, only single instruction is executing at one clock cycle but there are multiple data that is each processing unit can operate on a different data element. This type of machine typically has an instruction dispatcher, a very high bandwidth internal network and a very large array of very small capacity instruction unit that is best suited for specialized problem that is characterized by the high degree of regularity such as image processing. That is there is only single data Ah, sorry, there is only single instruction but there are multiple number of data that is used. That is A, B, C, multiple number of data. That is best suited for the specialized problem that is characterized by the high degree of regularity. These are synchronous. There are two types of variety. Example include this one. This is the previous instruction. There are, there are uh, single instruction that is uh, divided into n number of processes that is p1, p2, p3 that depends on the time to time. Then MI, MIST that is your multiple instruction single data. This says a single data stream is fed into the multiple processing unit that is a single data is fed is stored into the multiple processing units each processing unit operates on the data individually independently via independent instruction stream that is each processing unit operates on the data few actual examples of this class of parallel computer have been existed that is only uh, more than one instructions are executing on a single data this is example. This is says multiple cryptography algorithms attempted to crack a single coded message. This is the previous instruction. This is the previous. This is the previous. Then load A. Then C1 equals to A1 into 1. C2 equals to A1 into 2. Cn equals to A1 into n. Then store C, C2, Cn. Next instruction, next instruction, next one. Then next is your MIMD that is multiple instructions multiple data currently the most common type of parallel computer that is this is the most common type of the computing most modern computers falls into this category that is multiple instructions that is every processor may be executing a different instruction stream then there are multiple data that is used that is every processor may be working with the different data stream 
execution can be synchronous or the asynchronous deterministic or the non deterministic example includes most current supercomputers network parallel computers grids and the multi processor smp computers including some types of pcs that is more than one instructions are executing on the multiple data that is four variables are used and four variables are executing or used by the multiple instructions these are the various technology terminology that is used in the parallel computing first of all there is a task a uh, task is typically a program or program like set of instruction that is executed by the processor that is any task any flow that is used or that is accessed by the program that is used by the program uh, that is known as the task that is a program like set of instruction that is executed by the processor then parallel task that is uh, at the same time more than one task are executed or a single task can be executed by the multiple processor safely at the same time then uh, next is your serial execution that is at the same time execution of the program is done sequentially that is only one statement is executing at the same time then uh, next concept is your parallel execution that is execution of a program by more than one task that is um, a program can be executed by more than one task by using more than one task with each task being able to execute the same or different statement at the same moment in time then next is your shared memory that is uh, also the next concept that is from a strictly hardware point of view describes a computer architecture where all processors have direct access to common physical memory in a programming sense it describes a model where parallel tasks all have the same picture of memory and can directly address and access the same logical memory location regardless of where the physical memory actually exists then our uh, next concept is your uh, distributed memory that is uh, the same memory is distributed among multiple processes among multiple tasks this is in hardware refers to the Uh, network based memory access for physical memory that is not common then communication that is parallel tasks typically need to communicate or exchange the data there are several ways that can be accomplished by using the memory bus by using the network by using the data exchange then next is synchronization that involves that uh, both the sender and receiver are synchronized with each other by using the bits that is a zero and a but uh, one bit this says synchronization usually involves waiting by at least one task and can therefore cause a parallel application workload execution to increase next is your gran gran uh, granularity that is a qualitative measure of the ratio of computation to communication that is a granularity then observe speed up that is a speed up that is parallelized that is a voltage block of the parallel execution so these are the multiple uh, issues or these are the multiple instruction that is using the or uh, that is using in the instructions then next is your parallel overhead that is at the same time more overhead is possible that is the amount of time that is required to coordinate the parallel task such as opposed to doing the useful parallel overhead can include factors such as uh, task startup time synchronization data communication software overhead task termination time then next issue is your scalability that is refers to the or that refers to a parallel system that's the ability to demonstrate a pro- appropriate increase in the parallel speed up with the addition or with the addition of more processors the scalability factors includes application algorithm parallel overhead so these are the various uh, terms or these are the various issues that is available for the parallel computing now next topic is your other concurrency issues so this is the topic 
that I will be starting after the break. So let's take the 5 to 10 minutes break and then come back starting with this topic that is the concurrency issues. So first of all, let's take 5 to 10 minutes break. Now let's start with the next topic that is the concurrency issues that is what are the other concurrency issues that is available whenever we use the concurrent methods. This is uh, you probably noticed that life got much more complicated once we are asked to synchronize access to the shared data that is life becomes more complicated whenever we synchronize or whenever we are asked to synchronize the access. So far, we have looked at technique for mutual exclusion and the procedure consumer synchronization. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. Synchronization is fundamentally difficult problem that raises issues that simply do not raise arise in the ordinary sequential programs. This section is a survey of some type of issues that we ne you need to be aware of when you write the concurrent program. So what are the issues that is available or these are the typical issues that arises whenever concurrent flows of any kind manipulate the shared resources. Whenever, uh, when, whenever we use the concurrency that uses the shared resources, these are the concurrency issues that is available. One is your threat safety. That, that is, um, there is also issue that threat is not safe whenever we use the threat concurrency. This says when we uh, program with the thread that is when we use the thread in the program we must be careful to write the functions that have a property known as the thread safety that is we must be careful we must be useful or to write the functions that have a property known as the thread safety a function is said to be thread safe if and only if it will produce correct result when we call repeatedly from the multiple concurrent thread that is a function is said to be thread free that is a function that is using the thread is said to be the thread free only if uh, it will produce the correct result if a function is not thread free then we say that it is a thread unsafe that is a thread unsafe there are uh, three or we can identify four classes of the thread unsafe functions that is in which there is a thread that is uh, unsafe class one is functions that do not protect the shared variable that is the unsafe function that is a function that do not uh, protect or that the function that do not protect the shared variable. We have already encountered this problem with thread function in figure 16 which increments the unprotected global counter variable. Then class 2 is that function that keeps state across multiple innovation is also the thread unsafe function that is thread is not un uh, safe uh, that is an unsafe thread. Then next class is your function that returns a pointer to a static variable that is a function that is some function such as the c time and the guest host by name computes a result in static variable and then return a pointer to that variable that is that the function that returns a pointer to a static variable this is a thread unsafe pseudo random number generator there are two ways to deal with the uh, or deal with uh, this type of thread unsafe function. One option is to rewrite the function again then another is to eliminate the shared resources. So there are two types of or there are two ways one is uh, either uh, rewrite the function that is removing the resources minimize the resources uh, use the another resources that will eliminate the shared resources. Next category that will call uh, that function that call thread unsafe functions that is the function that are used to uh, use the thread unsafe function so that threads are not safe by using the function next is your next category of your issue is your uh, re-entrancy so first issue that is uh, taken is thread safety some threads are not safe that is a thread unsafe and various functions are used next one is your or next category or next issue is your re-entrancy that is also a class of the thread fun safe function known as the re-entrant function that are characterized by the property that do they do not reference any or they do not reference any shared data there is a thread safe wrapper function for the c standards library that is the c time function so t c time function is used for the 
थ्रेड अनसेफ फंक्शन यूज द लॉक एंड कॉपी टेक्निक टू कॉल आर क्लास थ्री थ्रेड अनसेफ फंक्शन दिस इज अ रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द री एंट्रेड थ्रेड सेफ एंड द नॉन थ्रेड सेफ फंक्शन दिस इज अ थ्रेड सेफ फंक्शन दिस इज द री एंट्रेड फंक्शन दिस इज द थ्रेड अनसेफ फंक्शन वेन दे आर कॉल्ड बाय द मल्टीपल Although the terms thread safe and the re-entrants are sometimes used incorrectly as a synonyms, there is a clear technical distinction that is worth preserving. Figure thirty-seven shows the set relationship between the re-entrant thread safe and the thread unsafe function. The set of all functions is partitioned into the disjoint sets of thread safe, thread unsafe function. this says uh, re-entrant functions are typically more efficient than the non-entrant thread safe functions because they require no synchronization operations it is also or it is possible to inspect the code of such functions and declare a priori that is re-entrant we will always use the re-entrant to include both explicit and the implicit re-entrant functions next category is you are using the existing library functions in the threaded program that is uh, use the predefined library functions in the threaded programs that is also in concurrency issues that is whenever we use the um, existing library function that is the existing c standard library function that is also in concurrency issue that is uh, used or that is uh, undertaken whenever we use the threaded programs this says most unique system including the functions defined in the standard c library that is most of the unix function contains the functions or includes the function that is stored or that is defined in the standard c library such as malloc calloc free realloc printf scanf that are thread safe with only a few exceptions figure 39 lists the common exceptions this is the common thread safe library functions uh, exceptions one is the thread unsafe function that is a one is rand that is your random function that is thread unsafe class 2 unix thread safe version that is a random r then str talk then uh, the thread safe class is 2 str talk underscore r then extending or ascending time 3 c time get host by adder guest host by name init and toa then local time so these are the various unsafe functions and the unix thread safe functions figure 39 shows the exceptions the ac uh, ascending time c time and the local time functions are popular functions for converting back and forth between the different time and the date formats the get host by name get host by adder and init uh, functions are frequently used network programming function the str talk function is a depreciated function one is used for the passing the strings that is whenever we pass the string we use the str talk function with the exceptions of free uh, rand and the str talk all of these thread unsafe functions are of class 3 variety that returns a pointer to a static variable if we not uh, need to call one of these function in a threaded program the least disruptive approach to the caller is to lock and the copy that is use the lock and the copy function to the uh, or for to get the advantage or to get the lock and the copy approach therefore unix system provides three entered versions of the most thread unsafe functions the name of the re-entered functions always ends with the underscore r suffix that is uh, there is a difference between the thread unsafe functions and the unix thread safe function so what is the difference whenever we use the unix thread uh, safe function that are denoted or that are uh, prefix or uh, suffix by the underscore r that is a unix safe or the thread safe functions we recommend using these function whenever possible these are the various functions then next is your races 
The next issue that is used is your races. This says a race occurs when the correctness of a program depends on one thread reaching the point x in its control flow before another thread reaches point y. That is a race occur. Race occurs means uh, a race scenario occurs whenever or when the correctness of a program depends on one thread reaching the point uh, x in its control flow before another thread reaches the point y. That is a scenario or that is a condition when the correctness of a program depends on the one thread reaching the point x in its control flow before the another thread reaches the point y. Races usually occurs because programmer assumes that threads will take some particular trajectory through the execution state space. Forgetting the golden rule that threaded program must work correctly for any feasible trajectory. That is, the race is a condition or race occur when the correctness of a program depend on the one thread. That is, the uh, uh, output depends on only one thread that does take the all the inputs that only depends on the one input that depends on the thread. An example is the easy way or the easiest way to understand the nature of races. The main thread creates four prior threads. This is the figure 40. This is the figure 40 that is a program with the race. That is a void pointer thread, void V A R G P. That is P thread that is using, then use the for function, use the P thread create, use the P thread join. Then this is the thread routine. This says, uh, consider the example in figure 13, the main thread creates four peer threads and passes a pointer to the unique integer id to each one. That is, it creates a fourth thread and passes the control to the EID, uh, sorry, id that is the identification. Then prints a message corresponding or containing the id. The problem is caused by a race uh, because each peer thread and the main thread. The main problem is the race or the differentiate between the rates and the thread. Can you spot the thread? Here is what's happen. When the main thread creates a peer thread in line 12, it passes a pointer to the local stack variable i. Now let's see. 12, it creates a thread, it passes a control to the, again the p thread, pid. Notice that the thread routine must free the block in the order to avoid a memory block. This is also the main uh, example of creating the thread. Now, next concept is your deadlock. That is your deadlock means what is a deadlock and what is a, uh, this is also a concurrency issue that is used. That is a deadlock. This is semaphores introduces the potential for a nasty kind of runtime error that is known as the deadlock. This is one of the uh, critical error that is available in every operating system that is a deadlock. I am repeating again, deadlock is a scenario in which more than one process approaches for a single resource that is uh, they never go beyond, they never go backside. For example is the train that is two train approaches to the same rail or the same step or the same platform that is they neither go backwards they neither go forwards if they do go backward there is a other another train if they go forward there is a another train that is a condition that is a train neither go outside uh, upwards neither go backwards that is neither go forward neither go backward that is a deadlock condition that is a semaphore introduces a potential for an ST kind of runtime error that is known as the deadlock where a collection of threads are blocked waiting for a condition that will never be true that is it waits for a condition that the condition is true when uh, then only the thread will execute this is a trajectory that does not dead deadlock this is a forbidden reason 
that is a forbidden reason for T. This is a deadlock state for D. This is a deadlock reason. And that is a trajectory that deadlocks. This is a scenario. There is a Vs, Vt, Ps, Pt. Initially S equals to 1, then T equals to 1. There is a Ps, Pt, Vs, Vt. There is a thread 1. That is a trajectory that deadlock. That is using the deadlock. This is a deadlock reason, this is a deadlock state. Process graph for a program that can deadlock. The process graph is an invaluable tool for understanding deadlock. This is an important tool that is using for understanding the deadlock. For example, figure 42. This is a figure 42 that shows the progress graph for a pair of threads that is using the two semaphores for the mutual exclusion. That is, these are the two semaphores. One is the VS, PS, one is the PT, VT, that is a thread 1 and the thread 2. Two threads are used. From this graph, we can glean or we can clear about the issues about the deadlock. What are the issues? The programmer has incorrectly ordered the P and the V operations. That is, uh, it is a mistake of the programmer that has incorrectly ordered the P and the V operations such as forbidden reason for the two semaphores overlap. That is, two semaphore overlap will be forbid with each other. If some execution happens to reach the deadlock state D, then no further progress is possible because the overlapping forbidden reason block progress in every legal condition. In other words, the program is deadlocked because each thread is waiting for the other to do a V operation that will never occur. Next scenario is that, or the next critical condition is that, the overlapping forbidden reason includes or induces a set of states known as the deadlock reason. If a trajectory happens to touch a state in the deadlock reason, then deadlock is invertible. Next condition is that, deadlock is an especially difficult issue because it is not always predictable. Some lucky execution trajectory will skirt the deadlock reason while others will be trapped by it. Figure 42 shows an example of each. The implications for a programmer are scary. You might uh, run the same program thousand times without any problem. So this is a thread 1, this is a thread 2. This is a forbidden reason, there is a forbidden reason for T. Then this is a process graph for a deadlock free reason. And this says program deadlocks for many reasons, avoiding them is a difficult problem in general. Uh, figure 42, uh, then you can apply the simple problem effective rule to avoid the deadlock. What is the effective rule uh, to avoid the deadlock? That is a log ordering rule. That is, use the log order. The same example that we have discussed, suppose there is an online reservation system. If two persons are approaching to the same seat at the same time, and uh, if one person is reserving the seat, for example, then another person did not know or does not know that uh, one person is reserved the seat already, but they reserve the seat that goes into the waiting. But if there is a lock system, that is, once the seat is reserved, that will be locked. So that another person will uh, know that, uh, yeah, that seat is already reserved, that is not suitable for him or her. That is a locking system. Means suddenly uh, the transaction occurs, then that transaction will be locked. That is a locking. For example, we can fix the deadlock by locking the S first, then T in each thread. Figure 43 shows the resulting progress graph. This says this is a mutex lock ordering rule. A program is deadlock free if for each pair of mutex in the program, each thread that holds both S and T simultaneously lock them in the same order. That is a mutex lock ordering rule. Next is a summary. 
so that's all for the chapter number 11 that is the conquering programming now topics are over last topic is your summary that is what we have covered in the whole topic a whole chapter the first paragraph says what is a concurrency what is a concurrent program that consists of collection of logical flows that overlap in the time in this chapter we will study or we have studied different uh, three different mechanism for building the concurrency that is a concurrency program with a concurrency programming with the processes concurrency programming with the input output multiplexing and concurrency programming with the threads we used a concurrent network server as the motivating application throughout next paragraph says processes are scheduled automatically by the kernel because of their separate virtual space then in next paragraph it says regardless of the concurrency mechanism synchronizing concurrency access to that shared data is a difficult problem this says concurrency introduces other difficult issues as well what are the difficult issues like thread safety Reentrance races that occurs when the programmer makes incorrect assumptions about the logical flows. Then next is your bibliographic notes. These are the homework problems. These are the various. Uh, These are the various problems, network uh, homework problems. These are the various solution to the practice problems. Problem number one solution, two, three, four, five, six. This is the solution to the problem number 8, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, these are the various solution to the problems. Now this is a new chapter that I will start in the next class. This is I think only for two, uh, mm, two pages. This is the first page, this is the second page, third, fourth, that's all. There are four pages only that is left in this module that I will finish on Monday and the Tuesday or only on the Monday only. And from Tuesday onwards, I will be starting your next module that is a procedural programming. So <coughs> that's all for uh, today's session. Now. Let's take a quick review what we have covered in this chapter, in this full chapter. In this chapter, uh, we have started with the concurrent programming concept, that is <coughs> what is concurrent programming, what is the meaning of concurrent programming, why we are using the concrete programming. Uh, then we are using the techniques, that is the concurrent programming with the processes. In this, we have studied multiple or few techniques, that is what is a process, what is a process context, uh, what are the uh, functions that is used for using the processes, that is how to create the process how client and server uses the process that is a concurrent server based on the process how what are the pros and cons of the processes how to create a process that is a creation of the process then we have studied about the concurrent programming with the input output multiplexing that is how concurrent programming is used whenever there are multiple number of or uh, uh, 
more than one number of inputs and more than one number of outputs that is the input output multiplexing these are the function that is used for the input output multiplexing this is these are the various examples then we will discuss uh, how to use the concurrent event driven server event driven server that is based on the input output multiplexing that is using the various functions then we have discussed what are the pros and the cons what are the advantages and the disadvantages of the input output multiplexing then we have discussed next technique that is a concurrent programming with the threads that is how concurrent programming is used with the threads this is a concept that is a thread execution model POSIX threads creation of the thread uh, termination of the thread detaching of the thread ripping of the thread then we will discuss how to initialize the thread that is an important concept then concurrent server that is based on the threads then we will discuss what are, uh, what are the variables that is used for the threaded programs how to use the shared uh, variables then threads memory model we have discussed about the thread memory model what are the types of variable that is used that is a global local and the static variable what is the shared variable then we have discussed how to synchronize the thread with the semaphores that is how to use the semaphores to resolve the synchronization errors then we have discussed about the various techniques like progress graphs semaphores that is a vs ps that is then we have discussed how to use the semaphores for the mutual exclusion how to use the semaphores to schedule the shared resources that contains two problem that is a producer consumer problem reader writers problem then we will discuss the concurrent server that is uh, based on the pre-threading then how to use the thread for the parallelism that is the uh, using thread for the parallelism then uh, we have discussed about the concurrency issues that is what are the other concurrency issues that is available that is the threat safety that is the races next one is your re-entrancy that is uh, using the existing library function for the threaded program races next is your I think deadlock yeah I think <laughs> not I think that is a next one that is a deadlock this is the diagram for the dead low that is a progress graph for the dead low <coughs> then we have discussed about the summary and the bibliographic notes what are the bibliographic notes these are the various solution question these are the uh, then various solution to the problems now this is the next chapter that is a error handling that is chapter number this is of only four page chapter that is the error handling so that's all for today's session now if you have any doubts then please text the doubt and I will answer you in the tomorrow's class not in the tomorrow's class in the Monday's class I am starting or I will start the next topic that is the error handling that's all for today's session thank you so much everyone bye bye